Hi, I'm Jim Cook at the Long Island International Film Expo, and you're watching Real Life. And I am with... Patrick Lindbergh. Brendan Pike. And uh, what's the name of your film? Nacht der Dämonen. Uh, in English, well, that's German. And in English, it's Night of the Demons. And uh, what, were, what were your roles in the film? Uh, I was the director. I was a production designer, and we also co-wrote it and produced it yeah. together as well. So what was the, uh, what was the film about? Uh, well, it takes place, it's based on a true story, and uh, it takes place in a Mennonite community. And um, basically, this uh, Mennonite community is being attacked in the middle of the night by what they think are demons. And so it's basically a horror thriller story about their, uh, their struggle with what's happening within their community and how they're trying to uh, handle it. Um, could you, let's dive right into the set design you said, right? So uh, tell us more about what went into the making of the, the film and what you were trying to achieve, you know, in terms of tone and so forth for set design. Yeah, well, I mean, right off the bat, like, it's an Amish community, so everything has to be handmade and everything kind of, it, it's essentially a period piece because everything's just, just a throwback. And so there's a lot that went into that, but we also had a lot of discussions about, it's very... The color tones are very precise, like we made a lot of intentional decisions in terms of where to go, and we had a lot of strong influences on films we've seen. And um, um, Yeah, a big part of that also was uh, lighting with that uh, set design, because um, in the Mennonite community they don't really have electricity and they don't really live during modern with modern technology, so a lot of lighting had to be uh, lit by candlelight, or looked like it was lit by candlelight. So a lot of our our set designs were based off of that as well. And so how your everyday or kitchen in an everyday Mennonite community might look like when it's lit just by candlelight, with and just daylight and no electricity at all. You know, this is actually reminding me of something in the '90s. Was it like Dogma '95, where you had to like use available lighting and use whatever props are around you? I, I forget what they called it, but um, Dogma '95. Yeah, that was the, um, yeah. that's like Harmony Corinne and all those guys. But, I mean, it, we didn't quite, we we used actual, we used a lot of practical effects for sure, like similar to the Dogma style, but we still like, we had technology on our side. Like, we, we used like lights with flickers so that they yeah. would, they would dim and light and so it, it appeared to be like candlelight. Okay, good, because I was going to ask, um, just for our, our, our techie crowd out there, what kind of camera did you use to, uh, to get that effect, help get that effect? What kind of camera? Yeah. Uh, well, we used the Blackmagic 4K production camera, and then um, with the lights we had a, uh, our, our DP would know more than, more than we might, but he, we had a, uh, a flicker control on all the lights to get the, uh, the candlelight effect on the on the lights so so tell us uh, tell us uh, uh, an interesting production day uh, a major challenge or uh, a lucky coincidence that worked out for you guys uh, well I wouldn't say it was a coincidence but we had a, a crazy night because we had a couple overnights on we, we had a four night shoot and uh, our last night of filming we were filming in a church and we were in the middle of the woods and uh, a huge thunderstorm came like crazy thunderstorms, so we uh, we had a bun a lot of HMIs that set up outside the the church windows and everything ready to go. And the uh, the storm came, and it didn't uh, it didn't help us. But so we sat we sat in a church with just lit by candlelight for about four hours till the storm went by. But it actually helped us out because we actually got to sit there and plan everything out some more. And then once the storm went went through, we. Uh, we got back to business, but it was a it was a crazy night. Yeah, but at least you had that. You made use of that four hours. That's really key. I mean, yeah, time yeah. time is money and all. So, um, we could, the best of it. Could you tell me, like, in terms of like the in terms of the tone of your film, like what you can compare it to? Is it uh, in terms of, like if you had to compare it to like another film or something? Like that? True Detective, for sure. The first season, not not, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and uh, there will be blood for sure. I mean, in terms of notes, he gave our cinematographer, who actually won an award. Tonight, he got an honorable mention, um, and it's definitely desaturated and dark. And I would say it's 
leaves you questioning humanity a little bit. It's yeah. a little hard. And the I, most important piece is it's it's about a true story. It it's it's a true story and like it's it's a little gut wrenching at points. Yeah, I'd agree. I think uh, a lot of one of my big points for uh, at least for theme wise and everything was a lot to, a lot like um, There Will Be Blood. At least that film. We uh, had a lot of comparisons to the characters and um, the characters intentions and everything and so yeah I think he hit it on the point with that. I would like to ask you something though when I first saw it um, I and just to discover that this was real and that this is this is something based on a true story I remember reading that at the end of your film and that's what really blew me away but I was wondering if there was ever a choice to actually include that what the following of the thing you're about to see because I don't remember you saying like in the very beginning of the film saying it was based on it. so I was curious to know like why wasn't was there ever a decision to include that in the beginning of the film to say the following is based on true events? That, that was a that was a discussion. I mean, I think like a lot of times when at the beginning of a movie it says like this is based on true events, and it kind of immediately like separates the audience from the film. And so we we want the film to stand alone in itself and then let it impact you in the way that it should and then inform you. You don't, you don't necessarily need that information beforehand. Like, dive into the story, like this is a film, like, see what you're gonna get out of it, and then when, and then at the end of it, just let your draw hit the floor again, and be like, yeah. whoa, that's, you know, and it also helps us, because people don't think we're crazy and came up <laughs> with some insane crime, but. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I agree, I think when we wrote it, we were trying to go with a beginning at least, at least a beginning to the story where we can capture the audience's, um, the audience's attention. And so I think, and then when we got into post, we, did, we thought about putting stuff in the beginning where we might let the audience know and all of that, but I think we just wanted the mystery. Because the whole time, there's the, throughout the whole story, there's a mystery of, uh, you know, what's happening to this family and what's happening in this community. And then I think at the end you find out everything. So it's kind of like one big hit at the end. It really was. That's what we were going for. It, it definitely was. I mean, now you, you said it right. You put a stamp on it, but it was just like it's like welded right to my forehead. I'm like, oh my god, really? That yeah. really blew me away when I saw that. Uh, so first I was thinking, oh, I'm watching a horror film, but no. Now you're trying the horror of the reality of this world that these bad things can really do happen. So you are telling an important story, not just a, a genre story. There's nothing wrong with genre stories. Yeah. So listen, guys, this is fantastic. I got to ask you one last question. Uh, how did you discover life? Long Island International Film Expo. Um, through a really good friend of mine and our main actress, uh, Natasha Coppola Shalom. She uh, she mentioned it to us and she said that we should uh, submit. So we did, and we're happy to be here. Yeah. Well, we're yeah. very happy to see you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. This has been real life. Sweet. Yeah. Good job.